Hey yo, this is G-Nitro. Today I'm going to be reacting to me being successful at actually creating a wood-like texture. Right now I'm just duplicating a fibers texture and then trying to take away the sudden edge by duplicating it. Then offsetting it so that the edges are in the middle and then I erase the edges so that the underneath is shown. And right now I'm creating the wood planks. And then I decided to actually have them vertically in the same direction that the wood grain is actually facing. Right now I'm just marking out where each wood plank is ending and beginning. I tried to think where each bit was supposed to go and for some reason I found that really difficult because it looks strange but it looks good enough now. I tried to add highlights at this point so that you would see where the shadows are in between the wood planks but the problem with this it makes the gaps in between so much larger and it looks really strange because of the fact that the wood planks are supposed to be right up against each other at this point i used a effect which i just found out about which is the distort effect which makes it really realistic in the way that it turns, but there's different types of it. There's ones which is basically a wave, and there's ones which twist, and there's ones which bulge out and in quite a lot. But first I decided to use the glass distortion effect in the filters gallery on the fill thing before I go within specific areas with the distortion effect. I'm trying my best to represent the way that the wood grain is supposed to twist and turn and bulge out. So I didn't want it too exaggerated. I touched up with the healing brush tone quite a lot with this. This is me trying to fix the gaps in between the wood in specific areas with the color select tool and now I'm trying to darken areas to try and fix my mistake I made earlier. Right now I'm adding highlights because I may as well because I used the burn tool for the gaps in between to darken it up and now I'm adding even more cracks in the wood. You see me use the oil effect tool quite a lot in this because it's very hard to get the wood exactly perfectly right with the amount of detail to specifically make it look good. I'm just adding more detail to the cracks in the wood. Now I just offsetted it and then I'm right now trying to smooth out the areas which have the sudden edge in. And now I'm applying another effect which adds more cracks to the wood with the filters gallery. And then I use the oil paint effect again and going back to the distort effect with the twists and turns and I had a problem with pixels being on the outside of the wood so I duplicated it and then made a Gaussian blur on the below layer so that the pixels look a lot less sudden. Right now I'm adding a colour gradient to the bottom layer. This took a long time because I couldn't figure out what sort of texture I wanted to have for the bottom layer. But then I changed my mind and just had a sudden black area underneath. At this point I noticed that the wood which I created didn't have that much of the original wood grain which I 
loved at the beginning. So I duplicated it and then messed around with the blending options for quite a long time. The areas in between looked very pixelated so I needed to touch up the bits in between with the burn tool. And then added a bit more detail to the wood because I lost it during the process of having the original wood crane being on top again. And added another oil paint effect. To find the actual texture which I was looking for with the oil paint effect took a long time. At this point I went back and forth with the oil tool quite a lot because I found it really hard to get the correct texture. Also by every time which I use the oil tool I need to retouch the edges in between because it doesn't actually match up with the healing brush tool. Right now I'm just adding more highlights because I didn't think it was enough for the edges. I didn't mention this with any other of my texture timelapse videos but I use a strategy for making it very high quality which is basically resizing it and then using the oil tool to add more detail and then I offset it back and then rinse and repeat and sometimes I need to actually resize it back down to a lower resolution so that the pixels technically have more information within them. So it's a high resolution image compressed into a low resolution image and then I just add more information on top of that. Which does take a very long time but the end results do actually look very good in my opinion. If you know a better way to do it, please let me know in the comments below. At this point, I'm basically extremely happy with my textures. The dents look amazing, I think, in my opinion. I honestly think that this wood texture was my favourite one so far because not because it looks pretty but because it just looks so realistic. None of my brick textures can compare to this. It's a lot more difficult to do for some reason. It's very difficult to get the very natural look of wood. I'm just going around with the healing brush tool again to smoothen out the areas in between. So I basically copy and paste an area which is a good texture to an area which had a sudden edge to it. At this point I was thinking this texture looks amazing. <laughs> In my opinion it really does stand out compared to my other textures. I use the sharpening brush tool quite a lot also, so it adds more detail to the detail. I mean, it detail to the detail. I mean, it sharpens up the detail rather than having it allowing it to be 
too smooth. That makes more sense to say. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe with notifications on and leave a like on it and follow me at GobDiam on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching. I've only got 37 followers on Twitter, which is terrible. I really need more. Please tell me what you think about this outro song I made. And please click on one of the end screen annotation video links things. <laughs>